And how would you go about like is that like okay there's the baseline assumption okay these parts are next to each other so like that's a that's a requirement for consolidating mm-hmm. but it, is it then like it, uh, uh, material like okay they're all the same material which is good they all see the same sort of environment like is it there's probably it's a lot a, of assumptions right on that it's a 60 page pattern <laughs> so uh i can't um, I, I'll try to summarize it into sure. to your sentences, but you, everything that you said is right. I mean, first you need to identify the two parts are adjacent. Right? There are yeah. a few rules that uh, the part should should stand in. We are identifying the connection method between two adjacent parts to say that there is no movement, that they're, 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 they belong to the same environment, to the same space or have a relationship between them okay uh and then uh when once two three four five adjacent parts were identified we're applying all the rules of a single part to, to think whether as a single part they make sense to that in fact in keywords as you've said material properties uh geometry limitations 12 different tests there Small holes, small thin walls, um, accuracy of, uh, of tolerances, etc. Cost analysis: whether this whole thing has a chance to be cheaper than five different parts being made in CNC or injection molding or diecasting or vacuum forming, etc. Because otherwise, we don't believe that uh, it will be very hard to convince engineers to use additive if we don't show them the financial benefit. Lead time analysis, whether this single part using a single package, a single thing can arrive faster than five different parts being arrived uh, separately to manufacturing facility somewhere. And eventually we're doing stress analysis. We're also doing assuming forces or we're asking the user to put forces and the user can, as a single part, can use it. the user can assess whether the part, what's the likelihood of failure of the part. In the in real life, according to the planet elements analysis, uh, for anisotropic materials based on a specific tray orientation that we choose for the consolidated part. So if the answer for all of that is is a green V, then we're highlighting this opportunity out of a lot of parts at once automatically for thousands of parts at once as a screen. Yeah, and in comparative, like com- comparatively, like the the status quo process right now is you've got one or two engineers who get a uh, right. uh, 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 a um, some homework from the boss saying, "Hey, like go through our <laughs> our product lines and tell me which ones are viable for three D printing." And if you have ten thousand, like it's going to be a nightmare to do that. And so your software kind of takes that process in a very structured quantitative manner and and kind of s- does that sifting and, and does that um analysis in an automated faster so i think there is a layer of of providing an auto- automatic tool to those who have this role as you said to to analyze a lot of parts of ones and identify and there is a layer of intelligence like the parts on validation like the the weight reduction identification that we're very good at. Okay, we're not an apology optimization. We're a generative design company, but we are very good in identifying bulky parts that if you'll make them hollow, mm-hmm. they they will utilize the benefits of additive manufacturing. That that's an intelligent layer that even a student or or an experienced additive manufacturing expert that, that go over ten thousand parts in, in I don't know in two weeks, it will be hard for him to think on those options. We're highlighting those again automatically uh, for a lot of parts. One of the, I think we, we've talked to uh, one of the car largest car manufacturers that we all know in, in Brazil, like uh, two months ago, they hired an expert to analyze, to analyze parts. He analyzed 2,000 parts over the last six months. We're analyzing 2,000 parts in five minutes. That's pretty much the, the equivalent. Okay. So uh, we're not replacing the engineer. We're giving them a tool to do what they need to do automatically and leave them to focus on those 50 parts that make sense to do a deep dev analysis on those 
one hundred out of ten thousand makes sense to to dig into the numbers. You see what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Because there's still a level of like, even if it's a green V, like there's more steps afterwards to get it into right. Right. <laughs> into manufacturing and convince someone that this is a good good switch. Um, no question. We're either integrating into the solution coming after Castro from a software perspective, deep dive analysis tools, uh, workflow solution tools. If you want to send five samples in a service bureau through a service bureau, uh, security uh, solutions, all those kind of stuff that are after Castro. Castro is two steps before that. Okay, so we're yeah. we're either integrating, I mean, shifting the user through those solutions coming after Castor or um, but what we state clearly you need a, an engineer it can happen right. without so, an engineer 